be ready 5 seconds i stand to share a few thoughts on these amendments proposed by the government in the juvenile justice care and protection of children amendment bill 2021 on behalf of my party let me begin by seeking to place the present amendments in a proper perspective the juvenile justice care and protection of children amendment act enacted in 2015 replaced the earlier juvenile justice care and protection of children amendment act 2000 this legislation replaced the old juvenile justice care and protection of children act 1986 so we have had a series of legislations in the past 3 decades on this very important subject i do thank the honorable minister for bringing this up as the honorable minister said we are all thankful that our children are being considered on a priority with the other important issues that have been taken up in this session the 2015 legislation brought by the nda government had the following aims and objectives i quote an act to consolidate and amend the law relating to children alleged and found to be in conflict with law and children in need of care and protection by catering to their basic needs through proper care protection development treatment social reintegration by adopting a child friendly approach in adjudication and disposal of matters for the best interest of children and for their rehabilitation through processes provided and institutions and bodies established the here under for matters connected therewith or incidental thereto the present bill introduced by the honorable minister seems to make certain amendments in the existing legislation of 2015 while we all support such a bill let me say that we must all as representatives of the people in this august house consider carefully the proposals before taking any decision what is at stake is how the society in criminal justice system deals with juveniles in conflict with law and what institutional mechanisms we are proposing our guiding principle must be to ensure that these delinquents should be handled sensitively reformed and prevented from lapsing into the world of crime later as young adults i would like to draw the attention of the house to some very key amendments and the import of the proposed changes first and foremost the proposed amendments put the entire onus of the child's welfare on the district magistrates ignoring the fact that the dms have already been overburdened they are overburdened authorities with the charge of the entire district on their shoulders as members of parliament we all know the life of a district magistrate with his or her multifarious responsibilities under the proposed amendment dms will be the overarching authority for exercising all functions related to the adoption including the issuance of adoption orders without the requirement of court sanctions here the honorable minister has put forward her observations which seem very relevant they will also be responsible for the functioning and regular monitoring of all child welfare agencies such as the child welfare committees the juvenile justice boards the district child protection units and the special juvenile protection units 
centralizing all powers and responsibilities with respect to a child's rehabilitation and reintegration into society in one authority may lead to serious delays and can have wider repercussions for the child's welfare. I urge the Honorable Minister to consider this aspect carefully. While it needs little saying that district magistrates are the fulcrum of the district administration across India, we should be equally cognizant whether loading an already overburdened system will produce the desired results. This amendment has been introduced with the intent to further empower DMs to act more decisively in the case of juvenile justice and child protection. However, what it really does in effect is it gives them disproportionate powers and even more so puts responsibilities on the extremely sensitive issues on the DMs. However, if we collectively feel that these responsibilities need to be devolved upon DMs, then the ministry should also consider providing them suitable assistance to ensure that this important issue of juvenile justice does not get sidetracked in the rigmarole of day-to-day -day work. Secondly, grievance redressal and conflict resolution powers have also been taken away from the judiciary and given to the executive. This is against the principle of separation of powers and takes away the role of the judges who are specialized authorities when dealing with matters of the law. We need to ask ourselves whether the proposed amendments will truly bring in the desired changes. Thirdly, the categorization and distinction of serious crimes under proposed amendment from the category of heinous crimes under the current law was necessary. Under the prevailing law, juveniles aged 16 to 18 years could be brought out of the protection of the juvenile justice system and tried as adults if they have committed a heinous offence. The latest amendment essentially limits the ambit and circumstances under which this could take place, thereby protecting the rights of juveniles and only bringing those juveniles into the adult criminal justice system who have committed crimes and offences where punishment for the offence exceeds seven years. The new category of serious offences is also in compliance with the Supreme Court judgment in Shilpa Mittal v. State of NCT of Delhi and another, 2020, wherein it was held by the two-judge bench that treating children as adults is an exception to the rule, and when two views are possible, then the view in favour of the children must be taken. This amendment is, therefore, a step in the right direction, since it brings back focus on rehabilitation of juvenile delinquents instead of retribution. The minister mentioned that the criteria for child welfare committees under Section 9 of the bill seeks to introduce the new criteria. I think it is very welcome that the minister specified what the guidelines should be for selecting the committee and they should be held responsible. I think that this is a very welcome step. Thank you very much. I hope that we can serve and look after our children better.